Catherine was excited to be home. She hobbled up the stairs quickly to her apartment. Once in there, she noticed the blood stain on the floor and her shoes on her coffee table. Then the memory hit. Someone had been in the house with her that evening. He had said something to her. She couldn't quite hear it. Was it maybe the person who chased her or someone who had helped her? Catherine was unsure of her memories and couldn't hold on to them for very long. They came in waves like the ocean crashing onto rocks. It was like a mystery that only she had the story about and had to piece it together herself. She really loved mystery and thriller novels from a young age, and when they were popular on TV for a time, she would watch any ones she could. The twists were amazing, and the killers were always gruesome or calculated. They had patterns and made mistakes sometimes. She relaxed on the couch thinking of how she could get a blood stain off a floor. Then she remembered she saw some tips online. They often didn't work as people had used clickbait and really silly titles to get you to watch the video. Then they would use other chemicals and editing cuts to fake the result. But every so often there was a proper solution. She binge watched a whole bunch of videos, some of which were absurd, adding more things that would make the stain worse than it was. She laughed at these a few times, gaining enjoyment from the lunacy of them. She would probably have to get a strong chemical agent to be able to clean it up or call in someone professional. Now, resting was her priority, as the stain was already set. Catherine was ready to start her recovery. She had to be careful at first and wait for the wound to stitch itself together properly. She had a few more days of rest, then she would start working from home. He tried to get back to the alley where he first saw Catherine, but he was unable to face it. The anxiety built into a flat-out rage in his dark little apartment. He started to thrash around hitting things off his old grimy desk. The old half-eaten convenience meal was knocked into the air. It was contributing to the smell in his hovel. The air in there was already thick and polluted from the factories nearby, and the trains passing would rattle the house at all hours. He had to get a fix tonight. It had been a few days since the last one, and the hunger was starting to build up inside. He truly wanted Catherine, but he would have to wait. The hunger had never been like this before. He would have gone a few weeks without the taste of flesh, but now it was getting harder to fight off the urge. He stepped outside. There were heavy clouds hanging over the city, but he couldn't tell if they were rain or just smog from this far out. The rain usually made it easier to sneak up on people as they were preoccupied with their umbrellas and staying as dry as possible. He dragged his unwilling body out into the gloom and set off towards the town. He was tired and kept obsessing over Catherine. He thought of how she was lying in the hospital and how close he got to her. He would have to check in on her soon to see how she was doing, maybe in a few days. He would not be stopping by tonight as the hunger for his favorite delicacy was too strong. He continued down the industrial roads. The rare passing car was his only companion, as many stayed away from this area at night. Some of the factories were starting their night runs and they shone a dim light on the smog above. He walked on the side as far away from the road as possible to not attract any unwanted attention. The city crept up like a tree sprouting from some sort of rocky outcrop. The closer he walked, the bigger the city grew in its influence and its size. The buildings jutting out of a sea of moving dim lights. These were his hunting grounds. He approached one of the first alleys he used to frequent. There were big drops of rain starting to fall. They hit the road and splashed, sending smaller drops off everywhere. The smell of the damp, wet road started to fill the air. It had been a somewhat hot day, so the heat still clung to the road. He hid in the alley. Many people would be through here as it was a nice little shortcut, and they would spend less time in the rain. He would wait till later when the foot traffic had died down and most people were home scrolling away on their phones. He loved being out hunting. It reminded him of being in a hunting blind waiting for animals. They would set the bait and wait for something to approach. Then in a flash it was over. The gun would go off and the buck would be dead. It felt easier than what he did. Animals were a little easier to trick. People were more complicated, but he had figured out that they would weigh up the time saving versus the danger. If they were rushing or tired from work, they would take the risk of a dark alley just to waste it on some device and hand that attention over to someone else. A sound. What was it? Someone was coming down the alley. Losing his composure and willingness to wait, his animal instinct had just taken over. He tussled with the woman, pulled the blade, and began slicing. He couldn't even wait for her to fall. 
and he had already sunk his teeth into her flesh. He felt the pressure and force like he was clenching his teeth. Then he heard it. A scream. Someone had seen him. He glanced over towards where the sound had come from. They were at the alleys opening to the main road. There was no way he would reach them in time. The rain seemed to slow as he realized he was in a little trouble. He had only been spotted once before, but he wasn't this far along with his ritual. His friends would not be quick enough, and he would not have time to dispose of any of the leftovers in the sewer. His eye picked up the silhouette of someone placing a phone up to their ear. They then moved off out of view, obscured by the wall. The alley constricted around him. He grabbed the body and tried to drag it to the nearest drain. If he could get the body down there, it would be harder to find. The siren started to cry out amongst the buildings. He furiously cut around the bite he had made, removing the flesh and the opportunity to get a bite pattern. He bagged the flesh he had cut off as the siren's cry was getting closer. His senses were sharpening and he checked both sides of the alley for any sign of the blue and red lights. He spotted the glow coming from the other side of the alley. Great, this would be an easier getaway. He took off running in the direction he came from, clearing the alley in no time. He had to be more careful in this state. He was careless, impulsive, and willing to do anything to get a fix, almost as if he was becoming a junkie. The hits weren't as satisfying as they had been before. He would need more and more. Maybe his Catherine would be his overdose or his cure. He was still running at full pace. He loved running fast. His feet struck the ground quickly. It made him feel light, like he was gliding to his destination. He heard the siren getting further and further away. The rain had picked up and the drops were getting bigger. It was becoming a downpour. This would help him as it may wash away any evidence left behind. The city was fast disappearing behind him. He continued to run, even though he wasn't being chased. He felt the freedom. There was a thrill in nearly getting caught as well as getting away with it. His adrenaline was flowing like a tap wide open. He felt alive. Soon he had passed the bigger buildings and they had begun to flatten out, becoming factories and warehouses. The lights getting dimmer, he started to slow down till he was walking again. The rain here was being driven by the wind. Without the protection of the buildings, it came down at an angle. He continued off to his disgusting place. It was time to rest. He placed the piece of flesh he had removed from the victim into his fridge. He switched on the TV to check the news. The light flickered in the darkness and lit up his cold face. The reporter was standing in front of the alley. She started talking. I'm at the scene of what can only be described as a horrifying attack. The witness who called the police wasn't able to identify any features, but they say a person was trying to eat the victim while they were still alive. Paramedics were tragically unable to revive the victim at the scene. The killer is still at large and is believed to be armed with a knife and extremely dangerous. People are referring to the murderer as the zombie killer, and police are on high alert for any suspicious persons. The zombie killer? He was a little flattered, but a zombie. He was a hunter, not some brain-dead, mindless, undead corpse. His kills took skill and effort. They just needed a catchphrase, he thought as his rage began to boil inside him again. I know what will calm me down, he thought. I'll snack on the little bit I was able to cut off. He headed over to the refrigerator and had his midnight snack, savoring every bite. He would show the police and reporters a true horror in time, but for now he would have to bottle it up. The risk of getting caught would increase greatly. He would then miss his opportunity with Catherine. Maybe he should check in on her. Catherine heard a thump, and she awoke. It was the neighbors again, they were up late and making a noise as usual. She headed slowly and carefully over to the kitchen to grab some water. This medication knocked her out and made her thirsty. She remembered back to when she was a child. She always hated taking medicine. It always tasted horrible. The pills stuck in your throat and the cough syrup was bad because they couldn't hide the taste with all the chemicals and flavors. Her mother would have to force her to take the wretched stuff and she would protest. She was stubborn. Luckily, she wasn't a very sickly child. Her friends would often get sick, and she would be fine. She used to think it was because she hated the medicine so much her body would fight off any sickness even harder than other people. Catherine missed her family and the country. She remembered her mother looking after her, her caring eyes and long brown hair. She also missed the wide open spaces and all the things you could do in the country. The city was crowded and lonely at the same time. The buildings surrounded you and slowly choked you out. She would one day head out to the country again to experience the clean air and beautiful sky. 
She had to live in the city because the old town she had grown up in had no more jobs and was slowly dying off. Oh, well, that's enough, Catherine. It'll make you hate the city even more. She was tired and needed her rest. She closed her curtains, locked all the doors and windows, and headed off to bed. She would not have normally locked everything, but for some reason it made her feel safer. She checked her wound. It was healing up nicely. Just a few more days and the stitches would be out. She flicked off the light next to her bed and quickly drifted off. Catherine woke up the next morning and made some coffee. She wasn't really meant to drink it. The doctor had advised against it, but she couldn't live without it. She had started watching the morning news in the hospital, so she grabbed her remote and pressed the on button. What was this a zombie killer eating people? This city is going crazy, she thought to herself. It was getting less and less safe to be out at night. The reporter started to describe the killer and Catherine had a flash of memory come back to her. The man in the alley standing there staring at her, she remembered she could not see his face, but she could feel his eyes. The memory was vivid and shocking for her. She set down her coffee and took a few breaths to calm herself down. Was it safe to go out at night in the city with all these people out there? Maybe she was supposed to be the zombie killer's next victim and she was just lucky. They added that it could have also been a completely different killer as well. She was lost in thoughts and the TV was blaring on in the background, becoming a mashup of indistinguishable sounds. Her eyes glazed over and she went blank. She had remembered some details she would have to tell the police. Catherine gave the police a call after she finished the last sip of coffee from her mug. They thanked her for the information and casually said it was probably the same killer, but there was no usable evidence just yet, and the case was likely to go cold. She had become a little angry at this and said that they needed to catch the killer. The officer was very blunt with her and said there was so much crime in the city lately that it was difficult to keep up with all the murders and crimes. They had hundreds of crimes reported every day. Some of them were serial murders, and they didn't have the resources or the detectives to try and catch them. She had ended the phone call and sat in one spot for a long time. The people who were trying to help were in a way hopeless themselves, overworked and struggling in a city drowning in crime. Catherine was very concerned with her safety, as she would be a soft target for a while if she had to go to work in crutches. She would need to be savvy and stick to the main roads, it would be tricky with all the people on the sidewalk, but she would have to persevere till she could walk on her own feet again. She would also have to leave work earlier than she normally would, to reduce the likelihood of something happening, staying away from that alley as well, that was for sure. It was nearly dusk. He had awoken from his nightmares. He switched on the TV, and the local news channels were littered with stories of the zombie killer. He began to shout at the TV like a crazy old man watching his team lose because of a bad referee call. He slumped over on the couch and began to rock. They didn't get it. I'll show you, he said as he turned off the TV. We hope that scared you a little. Remember to like, subscribe, and check out Creepy Midnight Stories for more.